record when you want. There's no plan, we'll just see what happens. Okay, sure. <laughs> So we're here at Bike Shed LA. It's the day after the Royal Enfield shotgun launch. And, uh, and Royal Enfield, we're here with a whole bunch of custom bikes, uh, what they call the legacy bikes made out of interceptors and GTs and some of the 350s, and also a whole raft of customs made out of the new shotgun 650. And we found Winston here from Rough Crafts. What's up? And since he's built some stunning bikes in the past, and we've known him a very long time, he's had poster bikes at the show. He's been featured in the London show a lot. The plan. We don't know what we're going to talk about. I have no clue. <laughs> but what we do know is we have two of Winston's beautiful bikes here. And uh, hi, Winston. Nice Hello. to have you. Thank you. Um, look, we're huge fans, obviously, of your stuff, which is why we keep wanting your bikes in our show. Thank you very and, much. <laughs> and other people are huge fans too, which is why they commission you to build bikes. Yeah. So let's just talk about what we've got here. Okay. Well, we have the Midas Royal and the Shotgun 650, which is basically a totally different of what I'm used to. Well, these two are totally different by itself already. So this one was done 2018, I believe, like five years ago. It was a full blown, full build, basically whatever you want kind of build with, uh, with their uh, Continental GT or Interceptor, I don't even remember. They're kind of the same bike. Yeah, they're kind different of the same. tank, different yeah, headstock, yeah. but otherwise so, the same bike. So yeah, the basic is uh, I want to build a cover it racer like out this. of I'm it. Trying. I'm trying. Yeah, I want to build a cover racer with a kind of a endurance racer kind of line, but I want to tweak the proportion. So you still have that fairing with the top half fairing kind of look, but I don't want to be the big big fairing. So I want the small front and the small tail kind of proportion. The way to achieve that is I make the Bearing as a two piece. So, this is actually just like wings extended from the tank. And if you look from the side, it actually looks like a connected piece, but it's actually not. So, it turns around. So, you don't have the clearance issue that makes me able to do this super small bearing with a similar line, just a different proportion. And because um, when they designed this engine, they focus a lot on this crankcase. The shape is just so beautiful. I want to emphasize that. So with this extended wind that covers a lot of, of the top, so I make that also the exhaust pipe, like this really sweeping line that also kind of makes this, like frame this crankcase into such a beautiful piece. And that's a difficult thing to do. It's I mean, there. you know, you have to sort of cut, what, how many sections was it? Four or five sections? Yeah, I think. With slightly uh, different radiuses yeah. to get the whole thing to come together. Because you want it to look like a one piece, like smooth line, but you cannot because it's not the perfect road. So I actually bent two different radius tubes and cut, I think each tube got five different sections and I welded it and smoothed it. So it looks like one piece, but it actually goes uh, all different ways, especially the one from the left. It's very difficult to make, but it turns out quite well and super pleased. And then all, oh, my uh, good friend from uh, Behringer, Olin's, BST, Pirati, CNC Racing, all got... SC Project, you often work with as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I uh, forgot that. Well, you know, I'm just looking after your sponsors. Yeah, thank you, yeah. <laughs> so they always support what I do, and then um, when I heard about this project with Royal Enfield, they all jump in and uh, help out. And, uh, well, of course, there's a super custom one-off swing arm. It's all aluminum, make it... I think it was uh, four or five centimeters longer than stock. So it gives a, a little bigger proportion to the whole bike. So for me to ride it more like it's my bike. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little too small for, for my size. But yeah, it is. It turns out really well. It's, it's been around the world several times. Yeah, it's been even to uh, this year, April, is still in Japan for Nagoya show. Last year, it was the riding show for uh, Hongai's Yokohama show, which is super proud for me. I'm a proud and dad. And you rode it in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a proud dad. So <laughs> no pressure riding no that problem. bike in. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing, we had this bike for almost two years at Bike Shed, and yeah. it was one of the most loved bikes we had on display. And I, we got it, I guess we got it just before COVID. Yeah. And then, obviously, you know, COVID happened. So the bike was with us for a long time, and it became 
part of the furniture, but every single person at the bike shed absolutely loved this mm. bike. And I think for me, you know, we've been following you and your work for a long time, mm. but there's definitely a rough craft, Winston look and feel. Mm. Now, I know what I think it is, mm. and, and I want to sort of get your take on it, obviously. But to me, the first thing is, you're clearly a designer. Mm. I mean, a lot of custom builders are builders. They're makers and assemblers of parts. And, mm. uh, and what they don't often have is what the OEMs have, is the ability to step back and look at an overall package from every angle and, and look at how it flows from the top, the bottom, the sides, the back, the front, and see it as a complete piece. And especially as you're building on other people's platforms. But for me, the first thing for, for me, for a signature build for you, is you do have that overall sense of design and shape and proportion. And you know, and if you've got a small front end, you've got a small back end, this is just going to keep moving, yeah. isn't it? Wow. We just keep fighting it. <laughs> Winston was like, no, the bikes have to be with the handlebars yeah. this way to look better. But you know, we all commented, in fact, I'm now going to mess with yeah. this, just about how okay. the, the fairing does move in and blends perfectly into this kind of, this shroud piece here that sits over the top of the cylinders and the way all the lines just kind of join up. And it, it very much looks like a, an, an OEM design. This, this is That's the way a, an OEM would work. That is actually one of my philosophy. I always, like every bike I build, I always want to finish to look so complete, so balanced that everybody look at it will say, oh, it could have from a manufacturer. You know, that is like the biggest compliment for me. If someone come over and say, oh, that exhaust is so cool. I'm like, oh, maybe I failed, you know, because not balanced enough. You, then you will focus on, uh, individual parts, then for me, it's not very good result. So, yeah, you, it's got to look like it was properly made. Yeah. And also that gives you the trust, especially if you ride a custom bike, you kind of feel as though everything's been thought out. And, and you know, for, you know, it's also about knowing the bike's going to work, it's going to ride, it's not just a bunch of components thrown together. So, but then the other two things about your builds are exactly not that. Mm. And, and, you know, one of them is your beautiful finishes mm. you know you, you work so beautifully with carbon fiber with these pinstripe gold leaf next to pinstripe silver and and you know this almost kind of um, it's like an electric guitar like a sunburst electric guitar from gibson where you've got the black fading in to reveal the weave with these beautiful pinstripes and that's very much a signature look for you i mean how did that come about because most of your bikes feature gold or silver of pinstripes and black, black. You allow the carbon to show, you mix matte black with gloss black. And it's very much your signatures in terms of colors. I think for me, the black is just the, the simplest way of showing the line of the bike. But at the same time, you still want to emphasize the line without overpowering it. So I always think that if you have a very well designed lines, you don't need paint to help it. But so all my paint is just enhance it a little bit slightly. So like, for example, everybody think I like carbon fiber, but honestly, it's just a different kind of black for me. It's just a different kind of black. So I like different weave of carbon fiber. I use the regular weave on this one, but I use forged carbon. I use 4K, 12K, all different carbon fiber just to have a different depth. Like also the shading, this gradient black, mm. it just give it the extra, extra depth. This like a, the smaller line, the thinner line here, like so many people didn't even notice before they see the actual bike. Yeah, but, it's beautiful. But when you see it from far, it looks like a very simple all black just with one stripe. But when you get up close, you get more look, you got more time. I always, I always got the comments like, oh, I, I just stand in front of your bike for 50 minutes. I keep finding the new detail and I love that, mm. you know. It is about detail. I mean, the yeah. way the seat's been sort of pre patinered yeah. and beautifully stitched, it's not some sort of standard tuck and roll. It's mm. not just a diamond stitch. It's, you know, it's your own, a geometric pattern that you know, complements the whole of the bike. I mean, it is all of these little details that for me kind of also mark out your work, which is the kind of thing an OEM can't afford to do. But then the other thing for me is beautiful badging and fine quality components. I mean, you know, your whole kind of brand and ethos manages to be kind of really old school and really contemporary all at the same time. Well, that's also part of, I think, Rockcraft's signature is I love to plan like really retro vibe and retro lines and retro uh, elements, but I want to finish it in a really modern way. Like I love the cutting edge stuff. I love all the, like Odin's current fiber, BST wheels, all the cutting edge stuff are super cool. But 
you always, people tend to get attracted to those vintage lines because they're just so beautiful, they're so timeless. So I always ask myself, how can I blend those together to create something that is timeless from 2023, you know? Yeah. That's something like I push myself for every build and I think it's been working out so far. Well, I mean, th this is honestly one of my favorite custom motorcycles. I, I say that quite often because I've been very privileged to have some beautiful <laughs> custom motorcycles around me and you know we've had some beautiful bikes from max hazan from ian berry at falcon we've had some stunning bikes and and this is definitely up there with, with those builds for me and we've been very privileged to have it and, and i love the fact that it's built on the royal enfield mm. platform because this sort of 650 twin cylinder engine is so again timeless it is and it's sometimes timeless design is what we all love we're seeking heritage and meaning and storytelling and there's something about the way bikes were designed and drawn and made and cars as well kind of back in the day and, and I think we all love those organic lines that are almost, almost from nature in a weird yeah. way. They're almost like, I mean, a lot of your bikes have that kind of brutish, mm. ready to pounce, like some kind of panther or a bulldog ready yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. And some of the best motorcycles, some of the best vehicles look as though they're about to pounce. You know, they design cars to look like they're eating. I the always like wheel. race stuff, you know. Anything that is designed for just a sim single goal to go fast have some meaning in the design. And I always took inspiration from any kind of racing, even though I'm not a race engineer. I always admire those. Even the modern Model GP bike, when you look at it, it's like, wow, I don't understand anything, but mm. it looks so awesome. You just want to. Like, I love the, the wings and the, the fins. Yeah. They remind me of a samurai charging into battle with all the stuff that yeah, hangs. That but everything has a purpose there. And then it just has its own aesthetic mm. built into it, which. For me, it's everything just inspiring. Just look at it. And then I try to uh, put a little of everything into my build. So maybe you'll see my next build got some winlet on it. Yeah, we'll, well see. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why well, not? let's talk about this yeah. next build because this is a very different proposition. So to launch the Shotgun 650, um, you know, in um, Royal Enfield's brand new platform, <clears throat> what they did was they sent out a bunch of body parts mm. to a whole bunch of builders and they didn't even send the bike um, and and you know we were kind of commenting that you know normally that's what custom builders throw away it's the side panels and they change mm. the tank and they change the fenders and the lights and everything but you literally as most of you would have seen on instagram you guys got a crate full of parts and you got the fenders mm. you got the side panels you got the tanks you got the yokes you got the headlight cowl and you got the front fender and that was pretty much it wasn't it yeah I basically you got anything yes else. and for me, honestly, it's definitely not what I'm used to. Mm. And when I get it, it's like, oh, what am I going to do with it? What can I do with it? Mm. Like, what I cannot do with it, that's the biggest pro problem. Because you know it's going to be bolt on back to the bike, which you don't even know what the like, bike looks like. Mm. And you don't even know which fit what, this and that. If you do this, will, will it still fit? So that's a big question. And also the time is really short. So how long I, did you have? I think I got three weeks. Wow, three yeah. weeks. That's crazy. So it's a quick, quick decision. Okay, I can do this, I can do that, and still keep it very rock prep. What can I do within mm. three weeks? So it looks rock prep within three weeks, within this limitation, and this is what I got. Well, you're the only person who actually really, out of all the builders, one of the very few people, I mm. should say, who actually chopped into it. I mean, yeah. you cut down the rear fender, you yeah. made a beautiful line here yeah. without knowing where it was going to sit above oh, the yeah. rear axle. So you had to kind of be sure that that proportion was right. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's got all of your trademarks, matte black beside gloss, gloss black with this beautiful, is that silver leaf? That's silver leaf. And is yeah. it kind of finished afterwards? Yeah. Like the, well, engine turning. Engine yeah. turning. I yeah. love that effect. I mean, that's so beautiful with and, like this. And also the stripe. fact that I, I know this tank and fender is bigger than my usual ones. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did this wind design. So it makes it the line a little thicker to yeah. accommodate the size of the tank. It's very art deco, I always yeah. think. But this, also, this style. like I said, if you look at it from far, it's still a si si simple line. Yeah. But uh, when you look closer, oh, there's actually like a wind, like a, like a feather kind of design into it. So it's still... And you also scallop the tank, which yeah, is yeah, beautiful. And, and, um, and I've watched most of the videos now from most of the builders. Can you remind me how you did that? What well, was the, was basically, that? you look at the line, 
and then you look at how the the light reflects and then i decide like where i should cut it mm. so it's actually cut in two pieces yeah and when i cut it out i, I will cut another uh steel strip and then i will that steel strip to the piece that was cut out so it's like this piece it got uh so it's like a, a step a, like a side wall around it right yeah yeah and then you got enough meat there and you put it in and it's like okay you want it how much insert you want it mm. and then you weld it back you cut off the rest of it that's basically what it is but what you've achieved is again beautiful and, and lisa if you head back a little bit and look at the whole of the side of the bike you know you've got this beautiful relationship between a side panel where you didn't know exactly where it was going to go on the bike with this beautiful line here which kind of shrinks a really bulbous part made that smaller yeah that's and the then goal. it joins up to the tank and the whole thing looks like this could have been a Royal Enfield OEM design. It could have been a paint job. Originally, I want to scale up the side panel too, but mm. it's always like a lot of stuff inside. Yeah, you so don't if know what's I, behind it. Yeah, so I don't know what's behind it. So if I cut it inside, maybe it won't fit. So I can't do that. But on the tank, yes. Yeah, I did that with a Triumph. Uh, yeah. I actually cut extra holes into it, and then you yeah. can see things you shouldn't see. And yeah. I lost one of the lugs. <laughs> so yeah, I've, I've learned that lesson the hard <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah. So yeah, it works out. Yeah, like and you notice that I try to do this line to make it smaller. Yeah, and because it works. you want to shrink this bulbous piece. I mean, yeah. one of the reasons for scalloping things is to take away bulk. Yeah, and also I think the 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 common mistake that people think is when you scallop the tank, you want to do like really a uh, big scallop, but mm. I don't. I, I think it needs to be subtle. Yeah, like something you don't really look at it, but when you're up close, you then you notice the beauty of it no it's, it's is, a lovely shape i mean it's really enhanced and added to the tank and it it's kept the kind of the overall character of the bike but yeah. it's just added it's, it's almost like added a bit of muscular yeah, to it that wasn't exactly. there before and also like even just like how much depth here mm. how much depth here how much depth here it's all different oh and really every all, bike is wow. different every bike i just look at it's like oh you probably need a little more here and probably mm. a little less here it's something that i don't know i don't even know how to explain how I decided it, but it's all different. Are you a perfectionist? I am. Is that a, that, is that a challenge? I am. For, for you and the team and everyone working with you and yeah. stuff, it's like, it's I need for, another millimeter yeah. at the yeah. back. And, yeah. yeah, I'm always fighting for just like five meals, you know, yeah. kind of stuff. And then... I and mean, then, it's worth it. It yeah, looks amazing. And my, my silversmith, uh, to a normal side, he's just amazing. Like anytime, I just throw him like a rough idea. Okay, I need my logo, which, Row Enfield logo in it, and with that extra ribbon saying Row Enfield underneath, and he he'll make that. So he's your guy, and he's a jeweler. Yeah, he make uh, yeah. like rings and yeah, all the stuff. I mean, I've seen some of the bespoke stuff you've done for your clients, and yeah. the, the work the work is incredible. And it's yeah. always you. It's always rough craft, but it's always bespoke. I mean, you've done some designs where they're slightly different on each side, yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of work that goes into this branding. Yeah, and I think that's so important that. I think many builders actually uh, didn't have that, which is a pity. Like, I know many builders do really amazing stuff, but if you don't have a consistent uh, element in all your builds, you lose the, the opportunity of branding. Mm. And that's, I think that's very, that's very much a pity, especially when you do really good job with your builds, then mm. you lose the, the, how do you say that, cohesiveness yeah. of your brand. Well, you're, you're telling a story with every build and every yeah. design. And the thing for me was when all of these bikes rolled off and we're surrounded by bikes right now, um, we all knew which one was yours the minute exactly. it rolled off the ramp. Yeah. It was like, there's Winston's bike. Even, no even if I take out the emblem, yep. you will see that's mine. I, I didn't see that first. I yeah. saw everything else. And then the front end, you know, that was just about, again, you've kind of minimized this yeah. cowl with the mat against gloss. You've done this beautiful kind of mm. graduated I want stripe. to customize that, but... Honestly, I have no idea how it's going to fit, so I, I, I can only paint mm. that. But also the front fender and the rear fender are all chopped short yeah. just to make it tighter. Yeah, it looks great. It, lo it does look better. I mean, we all love chopping down a fender. Of but, course. you know, getting that right when you can't even see the bike, yeah, that's, you've got an awful lot of That's very scary. Yeah. So now that you've done this and it's been bolted onto the bike and it's got a lot of the original kind of stuff on there that you wouldn't be keeping, you'd have different... What, how, how If you now got this bike back... And Royal Enfield said, right, well, now finish the job. Well, give me a rough idea. What, what are you now going to do? Because you talked a lot be, about the rear that shock. That would be and... totally different, actually. Yeah. yeah. And I'm waiting for that call from Royal Enfield. 
yeah, I'm going to do a lot different, a lot more th than this one. Because the, the Shotgun 650 got this very signature frame loop here. I think it dominates the look a lot. And uh, some people like it, some people don't. But with me, I always want to celebrate what the manufacturer is trying to do. Mm. Yeah, I never want to get away from it. So I'm thinking, like, what can I do with that to make it like an even bigger feature of the whole bike. So how can I make the line flow? Mm. How can I make the other part flow with it? That's my biggest challenge, if I get that call. But I love the way your, your brain works, because when we were talking about the bike the other day, you said, well, I was thinking that if we mounted the shock here, it carries yeah. on this line, yeah. and then you'd extend the swing arm, so the shock runs that way. But then obviously you want to sort of don't want to make the bike out of proportion. Yeah. And then it was funny because I mentioned that to Adrian Sellers. I think it was Adrian or maybe it was um, Mark. Mark, I can't mm. remember. And they're like, yeah, that's a good point to mount it from. It's strong enough. That would mm. work. And, and obviously there are quite a few bikes out there that have an almost sort of flat or transverse rear shock on mm. there. So you're going to find some sort of spring that would work. So that was, I thought it was just interesting seeing how, how your mind works. You're, you're looking for lines. You're looking for flow. And also, I think the, at the same time, I think the celebrating manufacturer design is something I always keep in mind, no matter what I'm building. And that's probably the other reason why manufacturers like me. I've been privileged to work with so many different brands. They all love what I do because I think I even talk to the designer even before I start designing. I try to understand, so this is their goal. This is the target they're, they're trying to tell the story to. And so how am how is my build going to help them tell the story even better or push this story a little, like one step or even two steps further? That is something that uh, always interests me and also very fulfilling if I actually achieve that. So with that bike, I think it works pretty well. So mm. if I get to build this one, we'll yeah. see how it goes. Well, I think the great thing is, is the manufacturers are restricted. Yeah. They're dealing with homologation across all these oh, countries. Yeah. They're dealing with compliance and... Cost. You know, Euro six or whatever the, the toughest common yeah. denominator, the lowest, toughest common or highest common denominator mm. of standards for the whole world because it's not a big enough industry to make every different bike for a different market. And so they're limited. And then they have a budget. They're working to the marketing department would have said, mm. this bike has to be this price, X thousand dollars, yeah. pounds, whatever. So you can only make it from that price. Yeah. So it's <laughs> all of a sudden you're, you're compromising and compromising and compromising. And I, and I think, you know, speaking to some of the manufacturers and, and getting to understand what they want to get out of these custom programs mm. is they're kind of going, well, you can do the things we can't do. Yeah, exactly. Um, or the things that wouldn't be strictly compliant, but I they're still safe. I actually heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is why we can't do it, but maybe you can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we've had that conversation a lot with, with manufacturers who've said, well, if we give a bike and you customize it, mm. uh, yeah, then, you know, we've separated ourselves from that liability. And it's terrible that we live in a world of legal liability and compliance, but we do. Um, and this is a great escape from that. Um, but, you know, Winston, fantastic to have you here, as always. Thank you. Um, we, we love hanging out with you and seeing your amazing work. It's my and first time in Bike Shed LA, and it's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a good yeah. spot. We like it, too. Yeah. But it, it's even better with your bikes in it. So we're going to hang on to this one for a while. So if anybody <laughs> wants to come and see this bike here at the Bike Shed, uh, I've been told we can keep it for a while. Um, and I'm trying to keep at least one of the custom shotguns. And I did say, could it be yours? So if they'll let me have this, then we'll have both of your bikes here. And obviously we have some other amazing bikes here from some fantastic builders, but, um, you know, it feels like you're kind of in our family. So if we can have both your bikes here, that'll make me very happy. That's lovely. That's lovely. Uh, anyway, cheers, dude. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank and, uh, come and check out the bikes here. This one's definitely going to be here for a while. This one might be here for a little while. So come and take a look.